what is aquaponics? So in this video, I'm actually going to go through and show you a few different types of aquaponics systems so you can get a really good understanding as to what aquaponics is. So that's the thing about aquaponics. Everyone's system is totally different. It's, it's an ecosystem and it's based on your environment, your climate, your weather, your location, whether you've got a small space, a big space, lots of sun, not much sun. So I'm going to go through and show you a few different examples so you can get an idea of some different sizes and different ways of doing it. That way you can learn how to build your own aquaponic system based on your needs. What is aquaponics? Aquaponics is an ecosystem. Okay, and everything, every continent, everywhere in the world is filled with ecosystems and they're all different, but they all have some similar things. So when I say what is aquaponics and I say it's an ecosystem, let's actually have a bit of a look at that. Aquaponics is taking aspects of aquaculture, which is growing fish and farming fish so that we can eat them, and hydroponics, which is using synthetic, um, synthetic nutrients to be able to grow vegetables. We're taking the best elements out of both of those, we're merging them together into a man-made ecosystem. Okay, so it's fish providing fertilizer for the veggies and the veggies filtering the water for the fish. And I say ecosystem because this is the really important part. This is where we need healthy nitrifying bacteria to convert that fish waste into fertilizer. Without the bacteria, it doesn't happen. Okay, so. We have three components to our aquaponic system. We have the fish, we have the bacteria converting their waste, and we have the plants. The plants filter the water and then provide clean, fresh, healthy water for the fish. Okay, so it's a beautiful little ecosystem and it's a man-made ecosystem. Okay, because generally speaking, a lot of people are using tanks and recycling the water that way. Now you can do it with ponds, as in smaller, small little ponds. There are so many options and I'm about to show you some different videos to show you different ways of doing it. Okay, but that's the, the whole basic premise here is that aquaponics is a way of growing fish and vegetables together. Now let's have a look at just a couple of benefits before we get into some different options. Okay. So the benefits of aquaponics, it grows your veggies so much faster than soil gardens at least four times faster you're going seriously how is that possible when it's a natural ecosystem that we're creating well the reason it is is because we have constant water constant nutrients getting to our plants okay because the fish are always breathing and they're always producing ammonia so the fish waste and there's always water within our system so that's what the plants are getting they're getting a constant heaven based environment for them so as they've got constantly what they need they grow a lot faster and it's, it is the same with hydroponics but hydroponics is not an ecosystem so it's it's more of an artificial setup whereas aquaponics being the ecosystem is closer to nature it's as close to nature that we can get and we can be growing our vegetables a hell of a lot faster than in the soil now if you happen to have poor soil then you're going to have to do an awful lot of work to be able to get it usable for your veggies okay so it you can always do it now you could also live somewhere like I do I've got really crap soil in fact I don't have soil I have rock <laughs> basalt and shale I don't have soil so I can't have soil gardening unless I have it in wicking beds whereas I can have my aquaponic systems and I can grow most of my vegetables okay we can also grow a lot more in smaller spaces and that's one of the beauties of aquaponics is that it will allow us to have it in a small space. You can grow so much in small spaces. You can grow things if you're renting. You can take your aquaponic system with you. So this is where you'll decide what size do I want to build will depend on are you living on land, are you renting, are you in a home, are you in a unit, do you have to have it indoors, outdoors. All of these different options are what you need to be thinking about for your aquaponic system and all of that is possible. And you can be growing so much food. Now, the other big thing that I'm wanting to say is that it saves water. Now, I'm, I don't know where you live, okay, but I know where I live. I'm in Australia, and we often have um, water restrictions happening, and we get it, it can be really hot and it can be really cold, and we have really severe weather extremes. So, at the moment, my aquaponic system is in a hothouse, 
and it'll be taken down once it's pulled, uh, warmed up a little bit. But with the water restrictions, aquaponics, it, it sort of sounds a bit weird, you know, when you're, st when you're filling it up, you're going, oh my God, that's like 5,000 litres of water or 200 litres of water. When you're filling it up, going, oh my God, I'm wasting so much water. But the water is constantly being recycled within your aquaponic system, whether it's a pond, whether it's a fish tank, whether it's one of the commercial sized fish tanks, whether it's a 500 litre water tank, whether it's a bathtub, the water is constantly moving between the fish bed, the fish tank, the filter, the grow bed. Okay, so as it's constantly circulating, once you've filled it up, you don't have to keep watering it every day. And if you're someone who lives in an area where there is severe water restrictions, water is like gold. You've, you've got to look after it, you've got to make the most of it and you can't be watering every day. So generally within aquaponics, and this does vary depending on where you live, but you need to top up your aquaponic system pretty much weekly because of the transpiration that the plants are actually using the water themselves and evaporation. Can you imagine not having to water a garden every day to get a good amount of veggies? That's, that's, that's the reality, because we've got the constant water happening, we're not needing to water it all every day, we get to save water. So aquaponics, being a man-made ecosystem, we're helping the environment as well. Isn't that awesome? We're getting healthy food, we cannot put any form of chemicals on there, otherwise we're gonna kill the fish, which is gonna defeat the whole purpose of what we're doing. Should you choose, you could be growing food type fish, so you can even have your, your protein as well as your vegetable consumption, or you can be growing ornamental fish, so that there's definitely a variable there. We're helping the environment, we're getting lots of good food. We get it in a small state, small space while we're renting, while we're on land, when we're in our own home, and in a unit, in an apartment, and even indoors. That's the amazing concept of aquaponics. Pretty much anywhere. You've just got to work around your environmental limitations. So enough of me yabbering on about this, let's actually go and have a look at some videos showing you a couple of different types of systems and how they work, okay? Right now, so this is a great little barrel system which is ideal if you're starting, if you've only got a small little space. We've got a 200 litre barrel down the bottom where our fishies are. And we're not sure if they're gonna come out and say hello to you, but they're in there. We have the water pumping up into a solids filter to remove any of the solid waste. And then as you can see, it then comes down into each of the grow beds. And then from there, the piping comes down and back into here. Very, very simple. Took me about half a day to knock up, a couple of hundred bucks. And that means, I, it's only, it's fairly new, but this means that I can be growing just some herbs. I've got, as you can see, some strawberry plants there. And we can get things growing and growing well. So just with some ornamental fish and a very basic little setup in, in, just in a tiny little, tiny little courtyard here. So very, very small. This is my, my main system. Now this is a three by three meter area. Three meters by three meters in a hot house at the moment because it's cold and wet in winter. And I want to be able to keep my fish feeding and keep them healthy. So this is bigger than that little barrel system. And the fishies live in there, which you can kind of see on the right angle. Some of the fishies live in there. I have a way of removing solid waste from the system. This grow bed is my big filter. So you can see lots and lots of growth. Lots of growth have been happening and lots and lots of harvesting. And I've also had some cheeky little mouse, or some cheeky rats in here, which I've found a way to get rid of naturally which is by using some apple cider vinegar just spraying that on the ground and yes that is a live release trap so I'm able to catch them and release them out of here um, but yes it looks complicated when you don't know what you're looking at I promise you you will be able to understand it if you start small so this is a Look, I would still call this personally a small system, but you could you could call it a medium-sized system. We can see what have we got growing. Some silver beet, and I have broccoli. I have coriander that started to needs harvesting. I have some chives in the bucket there and some vermiculite. More broccoli, cauliflower. Got basil. More silver beet. More basil. Lots of snow peas doing well. 
and more of the broccoli. You can definitely see where the mouses have been, but we can see it's starting to come up here. And then we have our sump, and this is where all of the water ends up before it then gets pumped back into the main fish tank. This is a 500 litre fish tank, whereas the little drum aquaponic system you saw is 200 litres as the fish tank. Okay, so to me this is very simple, but I know to other people they look at this and go, holy crap. So that's why I'm wanting to show you there's different ways of aquaponics. So remembering we're taking the best parts of aquaculture and the best parts of hydroponics. So the aquaculture part is the fish tank, fish tank, removing of the solid waste, the sump, and the filter media here. So all of that gray, not gray, all of that clay is what we call expanded clay and that is where our biological filter is. So you know how I said that we need bacteria to be able to convert the fish waste into usable fertilizer for the veggies? Well, that's what all of this clay is. I'm zooming in there. All of that clay, that's exactly what it is. Oh, and I forgot, I've got cabbages in there too. And a nice little cabbage right there. This is number one. And some fake butterflies that try to keep some pests away naturally. So the hydroponic part is the growing of vegetables which we have growing nice and neatly in here and I do like order and I've done some massive harvests lately and I'm about to do another one and get rid of any of those plants that the mousies have been damaging. But that happens with any gardening though. No? We've got to make sure that we have everything free. So this is our perfect beautiful little well semi-medium little ecosystem. And I'm in the process of feeding my fishies, so they are quite happy down there getting their food. Let's have a look at some other systems. Okay, so this is another little aquaponic system, but it's, it's inside. You can see I've got my, my lovely little turtles here. Yeah, they're about 10 years old. Actually, they're older than that. They're about 12 years old now. Very, very simple setup here. I've got water coming in from the bottom. Just a small amount coming in and it runs through this nutrient film system, so through the PVC piping and it comes out at this end and back down into the fish tank. This is an aquaponic system. I've got my basil and coriander growing. This is because I'm lazy. No, I'm not lazy. Well, I actually, you could look at it as a way of being lazy. I didn't want to have to keep doing water exchanges on my fish tanks inside. And what better way to be able to have my turtles and have a way of growing some herbs at the same time and not needing to do anything about the water quality. I don't have to do regular water changes. I've got my, my female here who's moving along, saying hello. And my male down in the water. They've got their basking lamp, which is not normal for people unless you have turtles. But um, yeah, so I still have a filter and the water just moves across. This is an indoor option for those one, if you already have a fish tank, or two, if you're needing to have something inside, well, piece of PVC piping, a couple of little plant trays, little nets, and have the water coming in one side and out the other. That is a nice, neat, little, easy aquaponic system. And of course, I've got the light up here to grow. Again, another aquaponic system. How cool is that? Yikes. What a bit of a blast run past on this one. This one's... Uh, one of my earlier aquaponic systems, actually, back in, ooh, crikey, 2008, I think it was. You can see there's so much that's growing. I've got ooh, the beetroot right in front of me there. I can see some tomatoes and some celery and wowzers. What a flashback. And I've got um, some uh, asparagus growing in there and some onions and some carrots. So you can see in the, uh, the polystyrene box there. They grew so well. Again, more celery. I got, there, was even, there was corn and crikey, everything. So, yeah, just showing how you can definitely set up different systems. Now, this particular system was built when I was renting and I was able to take everything interstate. That's the benefits of aquaponics. I was able to move all of this interstate. I had to bring it with me up, up to, uh, where was it, New South Wales, I think it was. A couple of fish tanks there. And here's the grow bed. So where the bacteria lives, and you can see I've even got some towers in the water and the, obviously the fish tanks that are here, the 500 litre fish tanks. And that's before I put the riser in. So at this time I was actually studying aquaculture 
I wanted to make sure that anything I did, I did well and did right. You can see the solid separator and the sump there where all the water ends up and then it comes back into the fish tanks. Oh, such a blast from the past looking at this. I'm so excited thinking about this old system. It was fantastic. So much growth, so much food, so much broccoli. Oh my God. And some lovely silver beet there. You can see I obviously like silver beet because I've got it in all of my systems. And those tomatoes, they were up over six foot high. That was impressive. Oh, such a good flashback here. Back to the fish tank and the tower, some comfrey up the top. Fantastic. This system is very common. It's called a chop and flip system using an IBC. So we've literally just taken the top off. So the top 30 centimeters off your IBC and the bottom part is used as the fish tank. This is the first system a lot of people build and it's, it's really not a very good system, especially if you do it with a flood and drain aspect. You have not a whole lot of water for the fish down the bottom, but there's no solid separator. So if you're going to use a system like this, because it is very, very cheap to build and very easy to build, make sure you add some type of way of removing the solid waste. So if you're following any of the information that I'm giving you within aquaponics, I talk a lot about the need to remove solid waste from the system. The biggest problem with this system and why three out of four systems will fail when they do a system just like this, chopping and flipping and only have it like this, is they don't remove the solids and it ends up getting smelly and yucky within the grow bed. So once you've been in aquaponics for a while, you know that you need to have that solid waste remover so get in top of it before it's a problem and build it with a solid separator. It's a nice little neat little system if you can put the solid waste separator in there in some way, which can be as simple as adding a pail and getting the water to go straight up into the pail and then into the grow bed. Okay, very neat little system, but yes, just make sure you have a way of removing the solids. We don't want them in with the fish.